Hello everyone. Let's uh, continue and finish off the discussion with uh, OCV timing on hold analysis. So the point that we had uh, concluded in the last video is that we'll be pulling in the data by 20% and we'll push in the capture clock by 20%. So let's uh, draft it over here and let's do it. So we'll pull in all the launch clock uh, launch clock network delay by 20% and we'll push push the capture clock network delay by 20% and see what is the impact on this lag. So let's do it. What we'll do is we'll take off the graph and put the 20% 20 20 derated values over here. So what you see over here 10 picosecond is nothing but the 20% less than 13 picosecond. 34 picosecond is 20% less than 43 picosecond. Similarly 25.6 picoseconds which is present over here it's 32 it's 20% less than 32 picoseconds. So we have done a clock pull in over here and the concept of clock pull in was fairly clear in the previous videos. Let's uh, do a push out over here. So uh, first of all uh, if we try to calculate the data arrival time based on the new delays or the new derated delays the data arrival time will be something 0.312 nanosecond okay or 312 picoseconds. So this is your new data arrival time and you can quickly add up all of them in a calculator and confirm this number. So it's 312 picoseconds or 0.312 nanoseconds. Okay, let's do a similar thing on the capture clock network as well. So if you push out all the uh, all the clock, basically you increase the delays of each and every clock cells over here by 20%. This is what you get. So 15.6 picosecond, it's 20% greater than 13 picoseconds. This is in contrast with what we did over here. 10 picosecond was 20% less than 30 picosecond. In this case, 15 picoseconds is 20% greater than 13 picoseconds. So we are pushing the clock in this case. Okay. Similarly, let's say this one, 38 picosecond is 20% greater than 32 picosecond. And, and and that's how it that, that's how we derive all this all these numbers and with this particular numbers the data required time that comes us to be that is roughly 30 uh, 351.6 picosecond or 0 0.31 uh, 0 0.3516 nanos 0.351 nanosecond okay so with the new these are our new data arrival and data required times so based on this data arrival and data required times we will have new slack numbers and now if you calculate the slack, the slack turns out to be a negative number. It's close to 40 picosecond or 39.6 picosecond. Okay. And this is a point of worry because we estimated that the hold will be clean or there will be a positive slack on the hold based on the original underated values. But when we take this particular chip on, then when we take this particular circuit or take this particular scenario on a chip, if and because of the variations that we see on the chip, there is always a possibility that one die or one section of the chip might fail because of the because of the negative slack over here or one section of the chip will have this conditions will have uh, will work on this extreme conditions and that part of the chip might fail because of the negative 40 picosecond slack that we see when we consider those variations so this is a point of worry this is the thing that we need to worry about and hence if what we have to do is first we have to take care of the extreme conditions so these was the extreme conditions where we took all the clock cells and derated each and every delay of that clock cell by 20% and we did for launch as well as capture. So this is the worst case scenario. So this is the worst possible case. So when we say a worst case scenario, it actually means that if you are able to, if you are able to meet, get a positive hold slack in the worst case scenario, we'll be able to satisfy any scenario that is present on the chip. And the chip will work, will function successfully on when it goes onto any of the, any of your mobile handsets or any of the applications. So that's the whole point. Okay, so in this case, with the extreme, with the worst case scenario, we see there is a failure of of 39.6 picosecond, and it since it's a hold, there is no way to fix there is no way to fix this hold once the chip gets fabricated. So the analysis part has to be strong enough. So in this case, we found out, and luckily, let's say we have found out this just be, just before the chip goes into fabrication. We found out that there is a problem, and the hold is failing by 40 picoseconds or 39.6 picosecond. So that might lead to unreliable data, unreliable data, and unreliable latching of the data, and and it might it might uh, uh, give a loss in functionality. Okay, so this is how big the impact of the hold is. But there is a catch again. There is a there is a similar catch that we did in the setup analysis. There is a similar catch which is present over here, and the catch is 
let's let, initially we, we have just uh, we have just put the original the, the new numbers over here we we replace the original numbers by 20% derated values over here okay so the catch is if you again look into these two blocks or these two sections of your clock network delay they appear to be common okay as we saw this we, we saw a similar thing in the setup analysis as well and we are seeing a similar thing in hold analysis as well okay so the so the way to remove this extra pessimism is to first calculate the amount of delay by this block calculate the amount of delay by uh, delay of by this block and then find out the difference what is the amount of pessimism that got added and then we'll see what to do with it with that pessimism okay so let's try to add up this all clock cell delays and it amounts to 102.4 picoseconds or 0 0.102.4 nanoseconds Point, 0 0.1024 nanoseconds okay and th this is the uh, this is the uh, s delays of this common clock path which is common between launch and capture so now let's look into the delay of this particular area and it comes out to be 153.6 picoseconds or 0.1536 nanosecond so there is an additional amount of pessimism that got added so ideally the numbers which is present over here or the delay that is provided by this section of the chip should be identical to be de uh, to the delay that is produced by this section of the chip and the reason is pretty simple because the common section of a common section of the circuit can't run at two different can't have two different delay values at same instant of time and that's the point that we have discussed in the previous video okay so again there is an additional pessimism got added and the value of that pessimism is 0 0.512 0 0.0512 nanosecond or 51.2 picosecond so basically it's a mod of this minus this so you will get a value of 51.2 picosecond so the, again there are two ways to do it so when we say when we see that over here if the delay is supposed to be 153.6 nanosecond 153.6 picosecond we are the, the this particular value is less than the than the expected ba value by 51.2 picosecond so either we take this 51.2 picosecond and add this correction and do the correction in the data arrival time or or, or we can look at it in, in a different way where we say that this particular section of your clock is 51.2 picoseconds f delayed than the than than what is expected so this section of the clock is expected to work at 102.4 picosecond but it's working it, it's showing a delay of 153.6 picosecond so we are 51.2 picoseconds error over here so there is an error of 51.2 picoseconds so we'll remove the error from this section we can do either way so what we'll do we'll remove the uh, remove the error from the capture clock section and the way to remove it we, we have this data required time which, en which which encapsulates everything so let's try to remove this particular error from this section so we'll remove it and it will look like 0 0.3516 uh, uh, nanosecond minus 0 0.0512 nanosecond and which comes to around uh, 300 picosecond or 0 0.3004 nanosecond okay so this is your new data required time and with this new data required time and this this data arrival time the slack that we get is 100 and 116 uh, sorry 11.6 picosecond or zero positive 0 0.0116 nanosecond and then we can say that we are in safe hands now okay so this is the power of the pessimism removal that the, the concept of pessimism removal that might or might not get neglected but this has to be taken care this kind of analysis has to be taken care of while we do an sta for a setup and hold timing okay so that's all we had from the uh, from the from ocv timing and from a pessimism point of view let's try to uh, bring up some more new topics in the next videos thank you